But what, babe? But what? Oh. She thinks I need more light. Okay, guys. This is um, book unhaul number three. We're back at the pallet. Um, this is going to be probably the saddest unhaul you've ever seen because I think I want almost everything that's here. So, don't know how that's going to go. So, let's start, shall we? Um, I guess we can start here with ah, Black Star Canyon, 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 Black Star Canyon. Are you reading a freaking book? <laughs> get up! We've been trying to get stuff done, and, like, she had all these things for me to do, and I'm like, well, what are you going to do? And she's like, read my book? <laughs> I've only got, like, ten pages left. Okay. Um, so she's got ten pages left. Black Star Canyon. Black Star Canyon. Black Star Canyon. <laughs> Black Star Canyon. If you did the episodes, at least people would Black like, Star like Canyon. <laughs> Black Star Canyon. What do we got here? Black Star Canyon. Black Star Canyon. <laughs> Black Star Canyon. Black Star Canyon. Black Star Canyon. Oh my gosh. Black Star Canyon and Black Star Canyon. These aren't even all of them. We never put out... Um, the last season in paperback. <clears throat> um, I love these little books, man. This is so awesome. Um, anyway, what I was going to say <clears throat> is that all these lovely covers were done by Zoe. So if anyone wants a book cover done, she does book covers. And if you like any of... Um, these covers. What's the name of this? Oh, Black Star Canyon. Um, I'm sure she would love to do a book cover for you. Ain't that right, babe? All right. That's a yes. <clears throat> Just leave it there, babe. Um, and for those of you who are like, wow, I would really love to read Black Star Canyon. Um, you can get ebooks of all the novels there's five of them on amazon under matt wall is the author name um but if you like zines and want something to hold in your hand i'm putting out the issues individually like this um in zine form and the first one comes out may 1st so, Season 1, Episode 1. So, that'll be fun. Okay, so, Black Star Canyon, I'm obviously keeping. Um, let me see. This book, The Golden Box, A Pat Abbott Mystery by Francis Crane from the Popular Library. Um, this could be my oldest paperback. Um, this is 1942. Um, I might want to hold on to this. Like that. Let's see here. 
Okay, I guess we'll just start going. This is going to be painful. Um, I have some more Alistair McLean. And I just, I have um, Caravan to Vacaris. How do you say that, babe? Which one? Vac Cares. Vacaris. Spell it. <sighs> and fear <laughs> is the key. <laughs> um, I don't know if I want to keep these. I kind of do. I just, I just don't know. So those are an I don't know problem pile. Um, Girl on the Loose um, by Gigi Ficklin is a Honey West novel. Um, this was okay. It, it didn't like knock me out or anything like that. I was hoping it would be um, kind of a lot more fun than it was. Um, but, I don't know. This is in the I don't know pile, I guess. Okay. Now, this is something that I've been contemplating for a while. There was a part of me that wanted to kind of purge my gold medal faucet collection. At least the yellow spine ones, but I don't even know if I want to do that now. So the books I have here are Richard Himmel, I have Gloria Kirby. E. <sighs> Shadow of a Gun by Carter Travis Young. Oh, that's good. Someone was working out their monthly bills on the back, it looks like. You know what's funny? Whenever you see um, old ballpoint pen, um, like chicken scratch, stuff like that, for some reason, it always looks like my grandparents were the ones that did that. No matter where the book comes from. <clears throat> I know it's not, but I feel like in like the 40s through the 60s, everybody wrote exactly the same. <clears throat> the Chinese Keyhole by Richard Himmel. Ooh. This is a really wrecked copy of The Shrinking Man by Richard Matheson. Does not look good. Are you keeping these or not? <clears throat> I don't know. I think I am. I just don't know what to do. Um, Flying Saucers Are Real by Donald Kehoe. This is um, number 107 from Gold Medal Fawcett. So this was technically the seventh book, although the first like four books, and in this one too, um, are just like articles they had in a magazine that they kind of compiled together to make a paperback original book. There's just a lot of history with these books, man. Come Murder Me, James Kieran. This is awesome. He hired a killer to kill himself. Amazing. Oh yeah, back. There you go. Let's see what else we got here. Ho ho. Emperor Fu Manchu by Sax Romer. Kaplawi. What we got? Kiss Off the Dead by Garrity. It was a rotten burn in the chair. Kind of fix they had me in. Look at that. Okay. What else we got? <clears throat> Fort Desperation by Frank Castle. Before he was the Punisher. No box. Home is the Outlaw by Lewis B. Patton. Uh, 
Town to Tame by Joseph Chadwick. He was broad of shoulder, narrow of hip. And finally, <clears throat> The Avenger by Matthew Blood. I can't believe I can't remember this right now, but Matthew Blood is a pen name for... Oh, I can't remember. If you remember, leave it down in the comments. I can't believe I can't remember that. That's awful. <clears throat> All right. So, moving right along. <clears throat> we got Ed McBain, Mary Mary. Um, quite contrary. I think I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, I'm into the 87th Precinct, but not so much the other stuff. So, that doesn't hurt. That's, that's, that's okay. Um, a Sir Henry Maryvale mystery, The Punch and Judy Murders by Carter Dixon. This one I'm keeping because, didn't we get this together at the Iliad? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. So that's a keeper. Um, <clears throat> and... <clears throat> lots of dust over here. Um, Leslie Andrus Caper. Crime Never Felt So Good. I do like this cover. Oh, man. Are you ready? Is it Brett Halliday? Brett Halliday, yeah. Did you look it up? Yeah. Thanks, babes. That's who Matthew Blood is. An original suspense novel, remarkably fresh and entertaining, The Washington Post. Look at the hair on that dude. That's amazing. Um, yeah, that's kind of a... Bleh. Okay, so this was originally published... 19... It was originally published in 1980, but this was 81. Um, this might be going the way of the buffalo. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. Margaret Millar, How Like an Angel. I'm not a huge fan of this book cover and stuff, so I think I'll be okay with that one. <clears throat> George Bagby, Corpse Candle. That looks awesome, so that is a keeper. Ernest Hemingway, Fiesta, or The Sun Also Rises. I did enjoy this for the most part, with the exception of two chapters that I thought were um, frivolous, I think is the right word. Um, but uh, I think we have another copy of this. I'm going to go look over there when I'm done. If we have another copy of this, I'll probably get rid of this one. Don't fall. Oh, man, they fell. Um, Earl Stanley Gardner. Now, here's the thing, and I talked about this on the other shelf as well. I have a lot of Earl Stanley Gardner, but there's some covers that I like and editions that I like and some that I don't. Um... This one here is um, from 81. And I like the file folder thing. Um, I actually used that on a movie cover once. Perry Mason. The Case of the Haunted Husband. This is on the fence. This one... <clears throat> um, the Case of the Buried Clock. This is from 83. And I'm not a huge fan of the look of it. Um, this book is in kind of beat shape. It's like all bent funny. And the pages kind of... Look at that. Um, so I might get rid of this one too. And look for a older copy of it. Hmm. 
I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not a fan of that cover. <clears throat> then why did you get it in the first place? That's a good fucking question. And it's because when we go places, and we're getting a couple books, and the books are like twenty five cents or fifty cents, I just get them. I don't have a reason. Ain't that right, babe? Mm -hmm. Can't believe she agreed with me. <laughs> Thanks, hon. <clears throat> Ooh, Isaac Asimov, The Robots of Dawn. Um, I do not have another copy of this. This one's really fucked up. It's like cut there, like the cover. Um, but I don't have a copy of this other than this. Uh, so I'm going to hang on to this for a little bit at least. Um, the Time Machine, H.G. Wells. This is my original copy of this from... When did this come out? Had it been 90s. 1992. This tour edition. Um, and I just love the artwork on it. It looks kind of cool. And he's like, oh, what do I got here? I'll show you. Turn the book around and you'll see my time machine. So this is a keeper. Oh, this is also an original, my Island of Dr. Moreau. When I say original, it means, like, when I first, like, I bought this new back in 94. So, um, I'll probably hang on to this. This wasn't my favorite book of his by any means. In fact, if I remember correctly... Even when I was reading it, the whole time, I was just like, wow, this really isn't that good. Um, but I kept reading it. War of the Worlds. Um, this I did not get. This is an Andor classic. Um, what year is this? 76? Yeah, 76. So it's kind of a fun cover. Um, the... The book is actually nothing like that cover. I, I honestly feel like they just asked some kid when he was walking to school, hey, can you do a cover for War of the Worlds? We just got the rights for it. We want to put something out. Um, fuck, dude. Look at that. It's not the... Look at the guys in the background. This is like one of the worst covers I've ever seen. Oh, that's funny. Are you keeping it? I don't know. I think I have another copy of it. Oh, I have another copy of it right there, too. Um, Death is a Lonely Business. This is a novel by Ray Bradbury. Um, I think it's a murder mystery kind of thing. Um, it was his first novel in 23 years. <sighs> This is a, I don't know. Okay. Oh, let's see what else we got here. The Artificial Man LP Davies. Uh, keep. Um, Alan Dean Foster, Star Wars, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I love that book. Okay, so that's a keeper. Ah, <sighs> oof, <sighs> all right, um, <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that, what, blowing the dust yeah, off, you could see the clouds of dust coming off well, of it, well, you could either see the clouds of dust coming off of it, or else I open it, choke, and start coughing to death <laughs> on camera, what's better, um, this was my War of the Worlds that I bought in, let's see, the 90s. This is a 86 edition. It actually is a really cool kind of Star Wars-y cover. Um, it's a signet. <clears throat> um, it's beat to shit. 
it's another one of those books that are bent in like every way but the way it's supposed to be I don't know well ooh the afterwards by Isaac Asimov that's kind of cool okay and then I have um some books from a bookstore that existed a long time ago now um, called the Book Baron in Anaheim and it was the greatest bookstore I have ever been to ever so um, two H.G. Wells I also have another H.G. Wells book from this um, Berkeley Highland series um, I paid $1.25 at Book Baron for it um, in the days of the comet and the food of the gods <clears throat> what trips me out about the food of the gods is I wasn't a huge fan of it but people who like H.G. Wells love that book and I don't understand the this these printings are from 73 I don't get the love for that book um but you know whatevs and this is 1967 i guess i want food of the gods what was it me who wanted that i don't know when did, did you, you say food of the gods yeah do you want that i don't know i don't th i think so okay so yeah i'm keeping those um yeah, this is the worst unhaul of all time. Uh, now, I have some Horse Clans books here. And I don't know anything about this series. And I remember when I got them, I asked you guys like what you thought of them. And I remember somebody giving me like a really good comment and made up my mind that I was going to read them, but I can't remember what the comment was. Um, which is, which sounds awful. Um, but it was a while ago, but basically we got Robert Adams horse clans, number 11, 12 and 13. So 13 is horses of the North. That looks awesome. Ooh, and he's on, like, a street. I guess I should just figure out what the hell these books are about. Um, number 11 is Champion of the Last Battle. Pretty cool looking. And number 12 is A Woman of the Horse Clans. So... Um, before I put these in either pile, if you have read these, please let me know maybe I'll just try to read one real quick I actually started a couple of the books that I did on this shelf that I was unsure about just to see what I thought of them before I made a decision um, then we have The Girl in Cabin B54 by Lucille Fletcher now I remember I think both of us read this, didn't we? Which one? The Girl in Cabin B-54. Mm -hmm. Oh, I read it for a challenge, I think. Um, and it is kind of forgettable right now at the moment in my head. Um, looks nice. It's a good-looking book. Hmm don't know and then this one is very hard for me to decide it is the Max Allen Collins Dick Tracy book the 16 new adventures um, I don't know I read a couple of them. One of them I didn't really like at all, and I was about to not finish the book. But then the next couple were okay. So I don't know if I should just keep going with it um, or not. There was a, a Batman book I have like this as well. 
I think it's Max Allen Collins as well, too. I don't know where that is, though. Might be over here. But um, that one was just borderline okay. See, it sucks because some of these, like, I don't know if I'll ever find this again if I decide I want to read it. Don't like this sticker. Oh, yeah, can't take that off. All the paint comes off with it. So... Oh, wait, no! Did I finish this? Shit. What was that? Okay. I'm... I'm having issues, guys. These these videos aren't fun. Are these videos fun for you? They're terrifying for us. Um, they are um, very stressful. They are very stressful. You don't have to get rid of the huge amount of books if you want to. I know. I'm just trying to make it easier. Um, I have my log books, the Star Trek log books by Alan Dean Foster. Um... And again, I don't know which ones I like better. So, I know I've done this before. So we have Star Trek Log 1. Like, I like the simpleness of just the ship. And I like the kind of kookiness of, like, the panel that has the log button and 1 and digital and all that stuff. I do really like that. Then, the original printings of them um, looked like this. They had this awesome artwork and um, this is what they looked like. And again, this is adapted from the animated series. So I've been just picking them up as I find them. So again, Log 3 is one of these ones, which again I like. And then Log 4 is, again, one of these. And I don't know what I want to do. I don't know which ones I want to get. It's really frustrating. Um, log 5, I don't even have a cover for. So that sucks. But it's that one. And then I have Log 6. And Log I think I like these ones better. Oh! This has been like the ongoing struggle trying to figure out which ones of these I like. So yeah, those are getting kept, obviously. Um, I like these. Oh my god. Get the F out of here. <clears throat> god damn it. I knew I had some of these. I just bought this book on Audible, and I had a fucking paperback of it. God damn it. <laughs> what? You think that's funny or something? <laughs> Shit. Swords in the Mist, Fritz Leiber. This is the Fawford and Gray Mauser. I knew I had this. I didn't know it was this one, but I knew I had a Fawford and Gray Mauser book, but I couldn't find it. And now I have... I, I could return that book, right? Mm -hmm. For a credit? Yeah. And then just get a different one? Shit! Okay, I'm gonna finish reading it in here. God damn it! I'm so pissed. I just bought it last night. Oh! Wow. I'm really mad. Because I knew I had one of them. And I was like, ah! Oh. Okay. Um... And then this one, oh my gosh, look how old this is. This is the last time I read this. Um, this is a um, Embrace Change. This is a uh, Secret Invasion. He loves you. This is the Secret Invasion checklist. So if you were trying to get all the books in Secret Invasion... And this happened right after Civil War and the 50 State Initiative. This was the next, like, big event. That is so funny. Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, my gosh. 
what is that, 2008? That was the last time I read this edition of Fahrenheit 451. Oh man, this is an anniversary edition. Does it have anything? Because I got the... I got a copy of this, where is it, I think it's, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, um, I don't know what the edition is, when did this, uh, 91, no, is it, this is a 91 edition, huh, What is this? Sorry, guys. A conversation with Ray Bradbury. Yeah, I'm going to have to hang on to this. I was going to get rid of it, but um, god damn it. Yeah, so I really like this book a lot. I love it, and I have another copy of it over there. If the interview in this is the same as the interview in that, then I obviously will get rid of that. Uh, dude, this is so hard. Like... Every single, I look at these books, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm keeping that. Um, Return of the Ninja by Jay LeBold. Choose Your Own Adventure 92. I used to have, like, a bookcase full of these, and for some reason, this is the only one I have left. So, um, I'm not getting rid of it. And if I could have all of those back, I would. Um, the Jungle by Upton Sinclair. I am not a huge fan of this edition, so I'll probably get rid of it. Um, 1960. Yeah, it just, it's an ugly cover, and it's really a heavy book for like a pocket sized paperback. This thing weighs a ton. Um,. <laughs> Oh, with your book? Good job, babe. <laughs> Good job. So that, that'll go. Um, Catcher in the Rye. This is my old copy of this. Yep, 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 yep. I'll probably hang on to that. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the movie edition. With Jack Nicholson on the cover. What do you think, babe? What? You keep it. I'm asking you. Oh, it has pictures from the movie in it. Yeah, that, that's getting kept because we like pictures, huh, babe? Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty silly. Okay. Now for all of the uh, PC people in the room. Um... We got a Charlie Chan novel here. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, the House Without a Key. Um, why would I get rid of that? That's a silly thing. <sighs> I guess this shelf has a... Um, well, Sax Romer's The Yellow Claw. Oh, God. Sax Romer... The Return of Fu Manchu. Sax Romer. The Trail of Fu Manchu. If I drop one more effing book. Um, Sax Romer. The Daughter of Fu Manchu. I love these covers. I'm sorry. I really do. Um, Sax Romer. The Island of Fu Manchu. This one's pretty cool, but I think I like the green hand, the shriveled head, the snapping fingers, the zombies. Are you kidding? Action packed. Tin tin my ass. Um, the mask of Fu Manchu. This one's got some like hole punches in the cover. It's kind of annoying. And then this janked just messed up version of Bride of Fu Manchu. And if you don't think Sax Romer has the ability to write Asian characters like in a right way, 
just look at this author photo on the back. He obviously is fully capable of this um, very kid-gloved thing that he needs to do here. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I remember freaking out on that when I first got it. Here's a better picture of the same picture. He's in like a silk kimono smoking a pipe sitting on a desk, as a writer does. What do you think, babe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think she's a fan. Um, to be honest, the Fu Manchu books that I have read, I've read the first three, and I think I started the fourth, and I was just kind of burnt out because I'd done them all like... I read one every day and for like three days and um, they're obviously of their time, extremely dated, but the action and the peril, like the peril has consequences and they have to move and they have to get there quick to take care of shit and like... It's just, the action's pretty fun. Um, all right. Hey, I'm going to get rid of a book now. <sighs> Robert Cray, The Monkey's Raincoat. I've had this book for so long, and I've never read it. I almost read it a couple times, but I just haven't done it. And if you look in those sunglasses, you will see Mickey Mouse cocaine, and a razor blade. And I don't know what that is. Water? Um, so yeah. Getting rid of that. I'm still pissed off about just buying Swords in the Mist. Ah. <sighs> Murder a la mode. Hang on to that. The Never Contract by Garrity. I wish I had written it, says Mickey Spillane. That might just be because it made a lot of money. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Double Barrel. Look at that cover. This is one of those amazing, like, what is this? Early 60s covers. That's just great. What is this? Watch, it'll say 40s. No, 66. So, not early 60s, but pretty close. Love that cover. Um, Ellery Queens. Shoot the works. This is a cool, like, collection with Rex Stout, Raymond Chandler, Dashiell Hammett, Ellery Queen, Eric Ambler, Anthony Botcher, and more. Um, who else is in here? John Dickinson Carr, um, Hugh Pentecost, Jeffrey Household, George Harmon Cox, and that's it. So, cool, cool, cool. What else we got? Rex Stout, and Be a Villain... And Over My Dead Body. I think I'm going to get rid of these. Um, this one, Chapter 18, is completely not attached to the spine. And I'm just not a fan of these, like, 80s covers. What is this? What year is this? Just so... Or 90. Yeah, that is very 90s, now that I look at it. Okay. So that was... A lot easier. Um, Hillary Wall, the Doria Rafe case. God, I don't know any of those words. Um, this is a Raven House mystery. Um, this is the only Raven House mystery book I have. I'm going to hang on to it, I think, because I have a Jalo um, of Hillary Wall. Am I saying that right, babe? Mm-hmm. Wah. Who is it? Wah. How do you say wah? 
W-A-U-G-H. Even Wall. Wah. Okay. So, Evelyn, now... Evelyn Wall. Evelyn Wall. And that's a guy, right? Yeah. See, I never knew that before I found out. These are my um, James Bond books. So, we have From Russia With Love. We have Dr. No... I say yes. <laughs> Diamonds are forever. Oh, another copy of Dr. No. So I could put that one in the get out of here pile. Casino Royale with cheese. Um, you only live twice. The Spy Who Loved Me. Moonraker. Ah! On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And, not by Ian Fleming, the 007 James Bond, a report by O.F. Sniffling? Oh, Snelling. Whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm keeping those. So this is going swimmingly. Um, now, I have a few other ones down here. Oh, here's one I could get rid of. Jurassic Park. This book's everywhere. You can find it in any bookstore you go into. So that's not a big deal. Am I right? I mean, am I? Am I right? Dude, why is this book so fucked up? Okay, we're going to come back to that. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing here. Um, Alright. Okay, so I'll get rid of all of these. Um, We got Dean Koontz, The Mask, Sanctuary by Faye Kellerman, and then I got some Nagio Marsh, um, Scales of Justice, A Wreath for Riviera, and A Killer Dolphin. <laughs> um, so we'll get rid of those. Now, let's get into more Star Trek novels. So we got um, Vonda N. McIntyre's The First Adventure Enterprise. Um, look at that. Um, now with Star Trek novels, <clears throat> I've always tried to just get original series stuff. So Pawns and Symbols, Dreadnought, Strangers from the Sky. So Diane Carey, Majlis Larson, and Margaret Wander Banano. Banano. Ooh, the epic novel of first contact between man and Vulcan. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Ah, oh, what else we got? Yesterday's Sun by A.C. Crispin. Ishmael by Barbara Hambly. Um, Mud's Angels by J.A. Lawrence. Woo! Um, and then, obviously, The Search for Spock, Star Trek III. Um, gotta keep that going. The Wounded Sky by Diane Wayne. I don't know why this book is like warped beyond belief so I don't know what's going on there oh no and then behind the bookcase I found this Corona by Greg Bear look at, look at that look at that nice and Web Romulans, M.S. Murdoch, 
The Tears of Singers by Melinda Snodgrass. Um, Demons by J.M. Dillard. And last but not least, The Final Reflection by John M. Ford. So, um, as you can see... Oh, actually, I have a pretty good pile there of books to give away. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen! Are you kidding? I didn't even think there would be, like, five. Um, so that's good. Is that good, babe? What? Jesus Christ. Love you. Love you. Good. So, um... Yeah, so a lot of these, I'm obviously, damn, some of these are warped beyond belief. I think I got a pile of warped books. Yeah, that's log six. That's the only reason why that got kept. So anyway, guys, um, I hope you have enjoyed um, a little bit of pain, but this bookcase is done, so we're moving on to other bookcases that are probably going to be harder to go through. Um, so embrace change. That's what we're doing here. And we will see you soon. Bye. Say bye, babe.